What's up guys, it's Thomas here. Today's video isn't about having a go or bashing Satch or anything like that. It's just a fun story with a bit of a weird twist and I think, um, yeah, well, wait for it. But anyway, there's certainly no hard feelings, I have no hard feelings and I'm pretty sure uh, Satch feels exactly the same way. And if we were in the same city, I'm also pretty sure that we would share a cup of tea. No, actually, we wouldn't share a cup of tea at all. That would be even weirder than this video. Um, so two cups of tea, a cup of tea each, and a muffin to be shared. Yeah, that sounds like the good middle, middle ground here. So needless to say, I'm a big fan of Joe Satriani. I mean, going back to when I was a kid, some of my fondest memories were cruising around with my dad listening to Surfing with the Alien. And he's still an amazing musician that's done so much for the guitar scene, which we all just have to respect. And perhaps on this particular day when I joined him on stage, maybe he was just having a bad day. I mean, this was in Newcastle, so perhaps he got a kebab and it was a bit dodgy. Maybe there wasn't enough garlic sauce on his chips, who knows. Either way, it's an interesting story and I'm interested in your thoughts on what went down. Before we get started today, let me tell you about my new app, it's called Guitar Scale Finder. If you've been stuck playing the same licks right here in the middle of the fretboard and you're unable to explore all the different sounds and possibilities around the neck, then Scale Finder is the app for you. With over 200 scales and arpeggios, you can learn how to play in all of the different positions of the neck, which is awesome for experimenting and improvising, or you can learn a totally brand new sound. With Scale Finder, it's super easy to learn something fresh and new, turn on all note mode when you simply want to see all of the notes available in one key, crank up the tempo and start playing along in practice mode, and Scale Finder is completely customizable flip the orientation, change to left-handed mode, and so much more. Click the link below and start treating that neck like it's your playground. All right, let's get on with today's video. Recently, I was exchanging stories with a fellow guitarist and we were going back and forwards and just reminiscing about, you know, certain events that had happened over the years. Anyway, I ended up telling this one about uh, Joe Satriani. And his reaction was like, whoa, that, that would have scarred me for life. And that got me thinking, what would you have done in this situation? Let me set the scene. So I'd recently returned back to the UK after a really successful tour with Joe Satriani. My band Bad For Good had hit the road with Joe and we played from Canada right through to the East Coast, all the way back to Los Angeles. In fact, the final gig was at the Universal Amphitheater, which I don't think is a venue anymore. And it's like a really, really awesome place to play. Me, Steve Vai and Joe Satriani, we have this really cool thing going where if one of us was in town for their show, we'd do a guest appearance on the gig. So we get up, play a song, do some shredding, have a blast, and then off we go, the, the set would continue as normal. So it was a really fun and cool thing to do. In keeping with the tradition, when Joe was on tour in the UK, he came to my hometown and we arranged for me to go along and do a guest appearance. Let me tell you about the amp that I was using at that time, which actually plays a big part in this. So it was the Marshall 30th anniversary head and cab. And it sounded great, it was a three channel amp. And basically, it turns out that this amp had launched and shipped out to customers with a particularly nasty fault. I mean, really just the worst kind of fault that you would want in your ramp. So it's a three channel amp, clean, crunch, and high gain. Now we were gonna be doing some serious shredding back and forwards. So naturally I'd chosen the lead sound, I dialed in the volume and gain, and it was sounding great. It was like absolutely just a fantastic sounding head when it worked. So the bug or issue with this particular amp was when you left it on standby for an hour or two or whatever, basically the channel selector melted a wire and could no longer select a channel and would then become stuck on channel number one, which was the clean channel. Now this clean channel was set up for bedroom practice volume, okay? So naturally, what do the guitar techs do? They leave the amp on standby, so when I get ready to go on stage, boosh, hit the standby, we are good. We're full launch, we're just ready to rip, right? Well, not so fast, because in this particular instance, 
It was one of the last songs of the set. Joe had been just absolutely just slamming the licks and songs all night. It was sounding great. It was my turn to join Joe on the stage. I'm plugged in, the tech's giving me the thumbs up. I'm ready to go. Joe introduces me, I walk out. The drummer kicks the song off and we immediately get straight into action. But there's an issue. Right away, I'm feeling something is just not right. And I'm, I'm not hearing anything through the monitors. Everything's like, it's just, it's not right. And it had turned out that the channel selector had melted and I was locked on a clean sound and bedroom volume. Now this is where it gets really strange. I know this straight away and Joe's giving it like licks like this. <laughs> You know how Joe does, and then I'm giving it licks like this. Yeah, I'm totally locked on this awful tiny sounding clean amp at bedroom volumes. Now right away I'm like gesturing, I'm looking at the tech, I'm looking at Joe, I'm, I'm, I'm saying like, hey, this ain't right, you know? I've been in situations where amps have failed, and, you know, a couple of bars in, a minute in, you know, people would stop the show and go, hey, you know, we've got a bit of a tech problem here. Let's uh, hook up uh, Thomas to one of the four amps that I've got on standby. But this didn't happen. And right at the front row, I'm looking. All the guitarists of Newcastle are there. All my friends who'd never seen me play, my family who'd never seen me play in a long time. Uh, because I've been doing so much stuff in the States. I'm finally back in the UK and we're doing this gig. And I'm like locked in this clean sound. I'm like, ah, this is a nightmare. What the, stop, help, you know? But like Joe's just, just in the zone. He's doing his thing. And I'm like making eye contact. I'm like, dude, my amp, my amp, look, look. It's just like, it's not my sound. And he's just like continuing through the song. The tech's not doing anything. I'm like, at this point, it's like pretty obvious what's going down. Like, there's no gain, there's no volume. I might as well be playing a ukulele unplugged. It was just awful. And this literally goes on for like three, four minutes. I like, it felt like 45 minutes, this song. I'm telling you, it was just like, it was never ending. Clean sound. Nobody could hear nothing. And there was so many moments like, he kind of was looking at me. But it was just like, what's up? What's up? I'm like, dude, listen, man, it's it's all screwed. None of it is working. Anyway, what felt like 45 minutes later? I'm like, I'm just thinking, like, you know, I just wanna I wanna get one lick off, you know? The song is supposed to end. Shred, 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 back and forwards. Obviously, I can't really do much shred. But that aside, the song finishes, and just before the drummer goes, boosh! I notice I've got an overdrive pedal on the floor. So I quickly dive down and I crank every single knob on that overdrive pedal to the max. And the drummer goes boosh. And I go. I play probably one or two bars of a lick, okay? And I'm like, oh, okay. So at least people maybe have heard a little bit of something, okay? Boof, great. I walks off the stage thinking it was a disaster, um, but hey, what the hell, you know, maybe I got five, 10 seconds of a lick at the end, you know, somebody somewhere would have heard some shred. But then this is where it really, really like got absolutely stranger than stranger things, right? I'm hanging out with like people that I had at the show. We're getting ready to leave, you know, I'm like, okay, I've, I've got my guitars and stuff like that. I'm just like, yeah, cool. Maybe I'll say goodbye to, to Joe and hopefully I'll see him again in the future. Joe's tech comes walking over to me and I'm expecting him to say, hey, you know, Thomas, um, I saw what happened with the amp. Uh, you know, we didn't really have a fix in place or, you know, Joe's amp wasn't really able to, you know, I don't know. You weren't able to plug into his amp so easily, you know, even though there was a few other amps on standby, I don't know. But anyway, he comes over to me and he's like, Hey Thomas, and I'm expecting like, I saw what happened. He goes, Hey Thomas, uh, Joe's really upset with you. And I'm like, what? You know, I didn't say that, I'm like, I'm thinking this. And he's like, yeah, he's just, you know, he's really, really upset. Um, you know, what happened at the end of the song? And I'm thinking like, is this real? 
Is this real life? There needs to be a song insert. Is this real life? But seriously, it was just like a surreal moment because like for four or five minutes I'm playing with this terrible clean sound. I finally got something that resembles a guitar tone by cranking the overdrive pedal. And that, because I played over the ending of the song by literally five or ten seconds max, probably wasn't even that. It just it just sent them to another level. I don't, I just don't get it. Anyway, so he's explaining that Joe's really, really like not happy at all, and I don't even know like how he left it. I was just shocked that he was apparently feeling this way. The tech um, left. I gra grab my stuff. I'm getting ready to leave. I see Joe in, in the corridor. I walk up to Joe. And I'm like, "Hey, Joe." Um, did you see what happened with my amp and stuff? Joe is like this. Did not make eye contact. He wouldn't even look up at me. He was furious. Like, like absolutely raging. And I'm thinking like, okay, I'm not going to talk about the amp. I'm just going to apologize now. I'm going to straight up say, hey man, you know, I didn't mean to go over like that. But I had no, you know, sound the entire song and I just turned the overdrive pedal on, um, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. Joe was like... No eye contact. I just came back from tour, like a couple of months back with him. So I'm like, just super confused over all of this. And bear in mind, I'm like 14 years old at this time, so I'm still a young kid. Um, but there I was explaining the situation, um, trying to put things right. I apologize for what happened. And uh, no, there, there was just eyes to the floor, and that was it. It was just game over. So super weird. I don't. I did. I, to this day, I still don't get it. Um, but like I said earlier, damn, we've all had those days, you know. I've had plenty of shitty days where you know something's just got under my bonnet, and I'm not in that mood. Um, maybe this was one of them. And also, like I mentioned earlier, there's certainly no hard feelings. You know, I still respect Joe, I think he's a fantastic musician. Um, you know, if I saw him now, it would be cheers, you know. No hard feelings whatsoever. But this was a very strange evening. So let me know what you think. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know, and if you want to hear more stories like this, believe me, there are plenty of them. Then also let me know in the comments. Give the video a thumbs up please, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and I will see you on the next video. Alright, you take it easy for now. Bye.